When I was young, I really hated being black. I felt that being black was like a punishment for me and my family. And with that, it really caused a lot of tension where we were all falling out, nobody was speaking. And you know, I just hated life. But the one thing that really stuck with me was when I think I was about say eight or nine, my dad bought a Michael Jackson CD for me. And that really, really inspired me. I was like, who is this guy, Michael Jackson? You know, like he's amazing. I want to be like this guy. And you know, that just, that really did it for me. That was when I decided I know who I want to be. My name is Alama Posey, Ayurunde. A name from far away. So far away, it may be difficult for you to say. So far away, my teachers at school would have had an easier time if my parents had just called me Dave. But I'm no Dave, and that's okay. I come from Ajay Gunle, a city of decay. Decades of pollution and streets full of waste meant that my parents couldn't stay. So we decided to move to a beautiful island, which goes by the name of Ireland. Growing up, the clouds always seemed so grey. And in the summer, oh God, did it rain. But hey, it sounded quite funny when they tried to say my name. Olama Pawezi Oyurinde. What kind of name is that? So, they decided to give me a new name. Black Junior is who I became. And this is the story of my claim to fame. It is time for your address to change. Today, you are going to be relocated. I say you are going to be relocated. I say you are going to be relocated. You are moving out of that dungeon. You are moving out of that circumstance. In the name of your father. At 16, I just left, I ran away. My mom did try to stay strong and she let it happen mainly for the fact that unless you actually go out into the world and see things for yourself, you'll never really know. But now, you know, it's a thing that we, we kind of try to talk about. We understand it a lot more. Our, our mindsets have changed a lot. It's good now, yeah? Yeah. Awesome, so how you doing? Fine, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. So, um, Basically, just with a few friends, and we're trying to just explore growing up in Ireland and the kind of effect that it's had on our culture, essentially. And what, what made you decide to move to Ireland? So they now said, if we are able to call, if a woman, not a man... If... My mum was more of a, the religious person, actually. So my mum, yeah, we used to have to go to church every Sunday, and that was one thing that I really hated. could not stand going to church every Sunday. I can remember a lot of instances where people were being blessed, let's say, and you know it was like they were literally breaking it down to MC Hammer or so, because the demons were in them and so on and so forth. And in order to try and calm myself through the whole process, I used to recite 50 Cent songs and Tupac while everybody was, you know, really getting into the whole momentum of everything. That was a space where I felt I could actually fully be a performer and not be judged by everyone. My parents chose Ireland because a lady told my parents that if you move to Ireland and you have a child, you'd be given citizenship instantly. From that, they decided that Ireland would be the best place to go. Mullingar, it's an interesting place. We lived in Dalton Park. We were the first black family to ever live there, and actually, we still are the only black family to live in the entire estate. I remember coming back home one time, and. Written on the door was niggers, and this is the black house. You know the area that we were living there, you not even believe that, you know? Those bad boys uh, me break into the house. School was difficult early on as well, so... I guess because I was actually the first black kid in that school too. I got, I got teased quite a bit, and... There was an incident where I actually fought one of the kids in school, I chucked a chair at him. One thing I'll never ever forget, after having a fight in school, my dad said to me, if anybody ever gives you trouble, the first thing you should do is pick up the closest thing to you and hit them with it. And I know myself now that's wrong. And to be honest, if I ever said that back to my dad, he'd tell me that's not a thing to do. But I guess at that time, that's how we felt. 
you know, I moved past it and we've grown. And a lot of them that I did used to argue with when I was younger, we actually are good friends now. So I guess times are changing. Things are getting better. That, that's the main thing. They are lovely people, like the Irish people. Very, very welcoming. And, you know, they always try to see the bright side. That's always been a thing people have asked me as well, is um, am I Irish or am I African? And it's kind of been hard to place myself because I am African to the core. But I grew up in Ireland and I'm also incredibly Irish. Like, I love a pint of Guinness. And <laughs> so, yeah, I decided if I can't decide on each one, I might as well meet them both halfway. So I'm black Irish. In, in the house, like Joe Mullingar, I think is when things started to get really difficult for the family. So, and then that's when I, I also got myself into performing arts and acting. And how did you feel about that? It's not a good thing for a parent to be telling children that, oh, you have to be a doctor. Like you said, you want to be an actor now. Fine, the only thing we just have to do is to keep praying for you. My escape was performing arts. Dance is just everything. Like dance, it's a release. You know, no matter how I feel, it's my therapy, per se. Being, just being able to dance, being able to be free. I got a scholarship to study at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is in Hollywood. When I got accepted, it was an amazing feeling because, you know, it really, really boosted my self-esteem and my confidence in myself. I moved to Bristol to save up for my scholarship. And at first, it was, it was difficult because there was four of us in one bedroom. And then it went down to three of us in the one bedroom. And then I finally got my own space, but I couldn't support myself and you know just more and more things kept going on and in the end it kind of it kind of fell it fell apart it happened just outside that church actually I can remember them saying to me as well that was that police camera that caught everything that happened I lost the scholarship when I was working at Prism nightclub and I finished my shift on my way home. I came across this guy who was trying racist slurs at me and instead of kind of just ignoring the situation and making my way, I decided to intervene and see why he would say such a thing. And so, for instance, well, the usual nigger was always one of them. Long story short, he ended up hitting me across the head and I hit him back and he's on the ground and I walked away and two minutes later the police came up behind me. Due to that my visa wouldn't have been able to go through because I've been placed with a criminal record and to go to America you need to have a clean sheet. It kind of knocked my dream out the window essentially. And from there after you know really feeling like I can achieve, I can do anything, I'm not the person that people say I am and then for all of that to just kind of fall apart in an instant. Maybe I am the person that they say I am. Maybe I can't do this and I can't achieve what I want to do. I can't follow my dreams. Good thing is I'm coming back out of it again now. Really, really turning myself around again. You know, these things are inevitable. The good things and bad things will happen, but at the end of the day, it's what you make of the situation. And if you want to go forward, then you still can. And you just believe in yourself and you go. So this is just a thank you from me to you and just to say how much of a, an amazing mum that you've been to me. So, thank you. <laughs> it's not me, it's God though. It's God that is doing it though. You know, with God on our side, everything is possible. Thank you.